Hi YouTube, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and in today's video I'm doing something that I have never done before. I am going to be answering five of your beginner actuary questions in just five minutes. Five. But I really wanted to make this a challenge for myself and I didn't just want to say that I was going to answer them in five minutes and not actually stick to it. So the challenge here is that if I don't answer them in five minutes, I am going to have to eat a jalapeno pepper. I don't know how I feel about that. I am going to try really hard to make sure I do answer in less than five minutes. So you'll have to stay to the end of this video to not only find out if I end up eating that jalapeno pepper, but you're also going to find out how you can get answers to tons more of these entry level actuary or beginner actuary questions. Okay, so to make this official, I'm going to start a timer. Here it is. And go. How much does an actuary make? Actuarial salaries vary a lot depending on many different factors like how many exams you've passed, what technical experience you have, what kind of related experience you have. It also depends on what industry you're in and where you are living or where you're working. So a ton of different factors contribute to this, but typically we see entry level actuaries starting at between 46,000 and 71,000. Now the good thing is once you start working, as you pass more and more exams, you're probably going to get exam raises for every exam you pass. Companies often also give bonuses or end of year raises as well. So during the years while you're still taking exams, you're going to notice that your salary goes up fairly quickly. Fully qualified actuaries often make over $100,000 and it's not uncommon for someone to make over $150,000 a year as a fully qualified actuary. How long does it take to become an actuary? For most people, it takes between seven and 10 years to become a fully qualified actuary. But again, a lot of different factors go into this. If you are someone that can spend tons and tons of time studying for exams, you might be able to get through them quicker. Whereas someone that has a family or is going to school at the same time probably can't spend as much time studying every day, so they're going to have to go through their actuarial exams at a slower pace. This seven to 10, this seven to 10 year time frame doesn't even include your bachelor's degree, so that's also going to add some extra time too. Another thing that you'll want to think about is that not everyone even finishes the exams. Not everyone becomes fully qualified. If you want to know what happens if you decide to stop taking actuarial exams, make sure you stay to the end of this video because I'm going to share exactly where you can go to get the answer to that question. What is the difference between associateship and fellowship? There are kind of two levels to becoming an actuary. First, you achieve associateship and then next you achieve fellowship. Fellowship is basically when you are a fellow, and that means you are a fully qualified actuary. Now, getting up to an associate level means that you have to pass seven exams and meet some other requirements, and then you will be considered an associate. Once you have achieved that, then you can start heading towards fellowship. In order to get fellowship, it usually takes between three to four years, and you'll have to pass three more exams and meet some other requirements. Right between the time from associateship to fellowship is when actuaries start to specialize. They can specialize in health insurance, car insurance, or some other sort of insurance or risk or something like that because that's the time when the exams differ depending on the track that you decide to take. How many exams do you need in order to get an entry level actuarial job? Most job postings require that you have at least two to three actuarial exams passed. But I've seen so many people get jobs with only one, or sometimes people have four or five exams. So there's really no right or wrong answer. There's a wide range in terms of the number of exams that someone may have when they start their actuarial job. The major reason for this is because, because some people don't focus only on exams, and I highly encourage you to not focus only on exams too. They are only one small piece of the puzzle. So if you focus on your exams, technical skills, and getting related experience, it means that overall you're going to be better qualified than someone that has just focused on exams. And in that scenario, you may be able to get an actuarial job with fewer exams passed. Are internships necessary to get an actuarial job? It is definitely possible to get an actuarial role without having an actuarial internship. I have seen this happen over and over again for members of the Actuary Accelerator community. The reason is that many of them have gone ahead and got what we call stepping stone positions. And if you haven't heard of those before in the past, 
I recently did a video about them, so I will link to it right up here so you can go watch it, learn all about stepping stone positions. But a stepping stone position is basically a way that you can get relevant experience that actuarial employers are going to value. And this can be just as good as an actuarial internship in many situations. So it's definitely possible to go and get an, an actuarial role without an internship. Whew. I rushed on those. I was going so fast, it felt like I was actually going to explode. I just couldn't even think of the answers fast enough. Anyway, if you have any follow-up questions about the answers that I gave in this video, make sure to comment down below. I will answer all your questions as soon as I can, and even if they aren't related to the exact questions that I answered here, I'm happy to answer really any question you have about the actuarial career. On that note, I said that I would let you know where you can go to get answers to tons of other beginner actuary questions. So I have created a whole PDF for you with tons of answers to beginner questions that I see frequently asked by aspiring actuaries when they're just starting out. So if you would like to get that PDF, just go down into the description of this video and you will see a link to where you can go download that. It talks about things like what's the difference between the Society of Actuaries and the Casualty Actuarial Society? How do actuarial exams work? What are VEE credits and how do you get them? What are the technical skills that aspiring actuaries need. All these questions and so many more are answered in this PDF. So if you are an aspiring actuary that is just starting out, make sure you go download that. Okay, now it's time to reveal if I was able to answer all these questions in less than five minutes. Okay, so here is my phone with the timer. I did it in four minutes and 40 seconds, so I had 20 seconds to spare, which I'm actually pretty surprised about because, well, I thought I would go over. But as a huge thank you for watching to the end of the video, I am still going to eat this pepper. And honestly, I'm a little nervous about this because I eat jalapenos all the time, but I don't eat them like this. I usually have them mixed into something. So here it goes. That is hot. Bye for now.